highlands up here. Up there is the highlands to the north. All the way to the North Sea. Down here, down that way. The lowlands of Scotland into England. further south. So, there was ancient tribes in the areas of Scotland. And Stirling here, this is Stirling history, by the way. Stirling, Scotland. 2000 BC, they found, around 2000 BC, they found some ruins. The Scottish tribes, very interesting. The Caledonians, the My My Mycenae, the Picts. They had a very interesting culture with lots of uh, burials and religious things. A lot of them focused on the islands outside, but some people were living here, influenced by Celtic and Gaelic from Ireland. And it's fascinating history, but we're talking about prehistory, so not a lot is known except for archaeological evidence. The Romans came in from the south, though, Britannia. We talked a lot about that. Uh, they actually, in their battles here in the early 70s, 70, 80 AD time frame, they actually passed up Sterling. Uh, this is a strategic spot. They, they actually recorded that they were going to build a fort here, but they went a little further down to Doom instead. But the rock may have been occupied by the Matai tribe. It may, may have later been a stronghold. So after the Romans retreated and their different battles, creating the Antonine Wall, way down there, Adrian's Wall and all that stuff, they kept coming up here trying to mess with the Scottish tribes. Nothing worked. So Western Rome fell. And the city though, this area, there was a settlement around the 600s, 700s. Uh, King of Mercia came up here, 655, the area came under Pictish control after the defeat of the Northumbrians in the Battle of Dunneshin 30 years earlier, from the 600s. However, however, there is no archaeological evidence for occupation of Castle Hill till the medieval period. So Stirling, as a city with the name, was declared a Scottish royal borough by King David around 1100. Later, they reaffirmed a ferry and a bridge on the River Force that is out there that connects with the sea. This castle, I'll go up there and get into it a little bit more, but first recorded to be built around 1110. What you see now, though, is 1300s to 1700s-ish. Some of it may be even newer, but a castle, a castle, Sterling Castle, been there at least since 1110. 910 years. Pretty crazy. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, since we're here at the church, this church, 1129 AD, the Church of the Holy Rood, obviously originally Catholic. The Scottish were actually influenced by the uh, Celtic Christian movement from Ireland. And then uh, after the Normans took over England, they were persuaded kind of to become more Catholic by the rulership up here. And anyway, that's the oldest church, Stirling. Uh, there was a bad fire in 1405, so a lot of it's built after that. But Westminster Abbey and this church are the only two churches in all of the United Kingdom to have coronations for a king or a queen. Uh, yeah, man, I can see the strategic military advantage up here. You can see it all around the countryside, some snowy mountains over there. On that side, it's pretty awesome. Also, crazy mountains up here in Scotland on a February day. All right, rest of history, I'll jump up there. Okay, Sterling really became what it is after this was built, 1110 AD, Stirling Castle dates to when King Alexander I of Scotland dedicated a chapel there. And he died there, 1124. Uh, the current castle 
Some of it's built 1300s, others 14 and 1600s, but it's been here this whole time. So under the Stuart Kings, Robert II and Robert III, that's when the earliest surviving parts of the castle were built in the between 1371 and 1406. So just back there is the Church of the Holy Rood. It's one of the town's most historic buildings, founded in 1129 next to the castle. It was rebuilt after a fire in 1405. One of the only churches in the United Kingdom apart from West the only church in the United Kingdom, apart from Westminster Abbey, to have a held a coronation when someone's made king or queen. Major battles, though, during the Scottish independence took place at the Stirling Bridge, right out there. Most notably in 1297 and in the nearby village of, in 1304 involving William Wallace. Braveheart fame. The movie's not entirely. dedicated to him on that rock. It's pretty cool. Uh, they, they were fighting the English for Scottish independence. England trying to... A little tangent on William Wallace and his monument here. The early lived from about 1270 to 1305. The early life of him is unknown. But as a young man, he killed an English which made him an outlaw the English crown to the south from here, who thought they could always push around the Scots. He then collected a small land and began to struggle against the English, a small group of people. Gradually, the number of his followers grew until most of Scotland was in the state of rebellion. As soon as an English army approached, however, the Scottish nobles, the rich people, deserted him. Oh. Too scared. In spite of this, Wallace defeated and almost destroyed the English at Stirling Bridge, right down here. There's the date. 1297. He drove the enemy out of Scotland and devastated the northern part of England as far south as Newcastle, where the Hadrian's Wall of the Romans is. As a reward for his success, Wallace was elected guardian of Scotland, which is basically king. They really love this guy, Scotland. Soon, a new and larger army. Commanded by Edward I. Marched into Scotland against him. 13, 1298, after that defeat, right down here. Wallace was defeated in the Battle of Falkirk, which is kind of near Glasgow. He sought refuge in the mountains, and for several years he carried on guerrilla warfare against the English up in these mountains out here, out there probably, over here in the highlands. He knew the land. He knew his land. He held out for years. But 1305, about seven years later, he was captured near Glasgow and taken to London. He was tried and condemned as a traitor. Although Wallace had failed to free his country, Scotland, from the yoke of England, his efforts were not in vain. He had inspired others to carry on the struggle, and a few years later, Scotland's independence came. It was secured under Robert the Bruce until England and Scotland joined up in 1603, not by war, just by inheritance. The King of Scotland became King of England. Poor guy in England, in London, 1305, was tortured and drawn and quartered. His legs and arms were tied by horses and ripped. Each horse was put in a different direction. I think they maybe cut off his genitals and sliced open his intestines and all kinds of terrible stuff. This guy, though, is remembered to this day up here. There's his monument. Cool. Robert the Bruce was involved in that. There's a statue of Robert the Bruce right there. There were also several sieges of Stirling during this time in this conflict, notably in 1304. And 
and uh, he's a hero in Scotland, William Wallace. This is where a lot of his heroic heroic acts in this surrounding countryside happened in his fight with the English. He ended up getting captured eventually after several uh, victories and executed by getting his entrails ripped out and all kinds of other horrible things probably in London in the early 1300s. But Robert the Bruce held on strong with his victories in uh, the 13 teens and won independence kind of <laughs> for Scotland for a brief period. Anyways, down here is another uh, historical area. There's an abbey that was down there. King James III of Scotland and his queen are buried there. The queen died in the battle in the wars of the Three Kingdoms. The battle of Stirling. Very tough up here, man. Lots of battles and sieges going all the way to the 1700s in this spot. Uh, the city of Stirling, though, economically was a port city along the river there. You can kind of see it's navigable right over there. <laughs> uh, the city's port supported foreign trade, which connects us to a different place. In the 15 to 1700s, there were a bunch of Scottish living in Danzig, which is Gdansk, Poland now. Danzig, Prussia. They had big trade there. They would go out, build their goods, sail their goods out to the North Sea, traveling through the Baltic from here. Pretty crazy actually. Um, 1800s, cattle and livestock were big and the river traffic though when the start of the Industrial Revolution slowed down and stopped because of the railroad and Sterling stopped being a big economic hub with Glasgow becoming bigger and Edinburgh too. Uh, but now it's, you know, a beautiful, picturesque town, still with a historic castle. And awesomely, I have ancestry connected to here. Ancestors of mine were born in this castle around 600, 700 years ago. Now I'm here. The site of battles with William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, happened all out there. So cool, man. Big time Scottish history. Right.